Hey, hey, Scott, I guess first question, uh, as a coach, when you see one of the guys that you had the chance to coach and recruit, uh, you know, reach a goal like that, what, what did it mean to you last night when when you heard uh, Trey's name called? Boy, I think, you know, the biggest word for me, I was emotional. I, you know, I was, because uh, I'm just so happy for him, you know, I knowing him like I know him. Knowing what this means to him, um, to hear his name called, you know, it was just, it's just, it's special. It doesn't happen that often, you know, in this business. And, you know, obviously my story with James is unique and awesome, but, you know, this, this relationship I have with Trey is pretty unique as well. Uh, and so I'm really, just really, really proud, really proud of him. What kind of, what the, what's the best part of his game that will, transition into the NBA what do you see as uh, uh, an area of his game that he's advanced and will be able to succeed early in? you know and, and that's a good question too and I, I think you know he is he has an elite skill and I've said that since we recruited him even at the size he was when he committed to us uh, he's an elite shooter and that's such a premium now right um, and and the way the game has played and changed and look and the way he grew and now he's not only an elite shooter, he's an elite six nine shooter. Wow. And so, you know, and obviously he's gotten better defensively. And uh, the other things that, that, that people don't know is Trey, Trey could put the ball on the floor too. And, and he'll be able to do that a little bit more at the next level as well with the spacing and the, and the freedom of the flow of the game. Hey, Scott, um, do you remember – when you first laid eyes on him, how was the recruiting process? And I think they said last night he only had a couple of offers. Yeah, this is a great story. Um, so back to the April of, of whenever, I guess it would have been 17, right? I, you know, that's the first time one of our assistants uh, saw him, Chris Kreider, in, in an AEU tournament. And so he was on our, our peripheral, like the B-list kind of board, Trey Murphy. The name kept coming up, but I didn't see him that April. Chris had. And it, it kind of was, you know, he's skinny. He's so skinny. He's so skinny. Coach, I don't know. I, I said, okay, I'll tell you what. The first July period, because that's when we could go back out again back then. Uh, they didn't have the high school team camps yet. Put me on Trey Murphy's game, game one. July 5th or whatever it was, and I'm going to watch him. And I'll, I'll make that determination then of what I think. And I believe it, it was in Atlanta, and it was on one of the far courts in the corner, and I watched him play a half. And I called Chris, and I said, offer Trey Murphy. <laughs> um, and, and we did. And he did not have many offers, and he wasn't, there wasn't many guys on that court watching the game with me. And so we, I think, kind of rose real quickly uh, in his recruiting but also at that point, you know, academics, you know, really mattered to Trey and his family. And so that really helped us. And then he came to visit us, I believe, in early, right after the, I wanted to get him, you know, right after the period, early August. And, uh, and he committed to us. And so um, six, four and a half or six, five, 160 pounds to, to NBA first round pick. Unbelievable. The way that college athletics is now and the movement, how do you deal with that? The fact that here's a guy that you wanted to, I assume, build a program around and then he leaves. So it, is it kind of like time heals wounds? I don't know what the situation was in terms of how he left in the terms, but like, how do you, how do you deal with that? Boy, Jason, you know, another really, really interesting and in-depth kind of, kind of question, because this is a unique situation. Um, you know, Trey invited me to his draft party last night. Um, I couldn't make it for a bunch of reasons. Believe me, I, I wanted to go. Um, for for us to have the relationship we have maintained through a transfer, I don't think it happens very often. Um, that's a credit to him. You know, look, and I'll say this on this, and, and maybe it's not true, and, and maybe Trey would deny this. But I, I'm not convinced if COVID doesn't occur that Trey Murphy didn't stay a rice out. I'd uh, be hard-pressed hard to be convinced of that. For a couple of reasons. Uh, one, he loved it here. Two, our relationship was tremendous. Um, and, and, and C, he was gone. He wasn't with us. I mean, he was home. He was with his family. And, and COVID was this situation of, of a very 
of something nobody knew about. So to go back to Houston, I, I, I get it. I mean, I mean, I'm not sure that was an option. Um, and obviously then too, you know, he, he started to see and feel that maybe, okay, maybe the high major, the, the NACC school would be something that he wanted to do. And maybe he was going to do that anyway. I, I don't know. But regardless, it kept us, you know, the day he called me, he was in tears. Uh, he was emotional. So I knew if this was different, um, leaving us. And so even so then through that, you know, he's a kid, you know, and I, I hold me, I'm, you know, I'm not going to hold a grudge against a kid or I don't take those things personally um, as hard as it can be sometimes um, because I, I had a deep caring for him and, 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 and I knew he and his family did for me and our program as well. So that's why I think it's unique and that's why we're here and on this Zoom and you guys actually want to talk to me about this because of that unique relationship. He FaceTimed me last night after the draft. We talked, we, we shed a tear together and boy, what a, just what a, he's a great kid and I couldn't be more happy. Coach, when did you get the sense that Trey was going to get drafted and then get drafted in the first round? You know, look, I, I had a belief when he was a freshman that uh, that if he kept on his trajectory of growing, first of all, physically, and on his work ethic, that someday we might be sitting here. I probably thought it would be after his senior year at Rice, um, but I, I thought he had a chance. Um, you know, you say that sometimes, and, you know, what is that chance? I, I don't know, because it's all really hard, <laughs> uh, and there's a lot of variables. But I, I'm as happy as I am and, and, and as kind of surreal this all is, I'm not shocked. Coach, I don't want to put pressure on your current squad, but do you see pro possibilities for, for any of those guys? I, I'd probably answer this the same way I would answer it with Trey on the roster. You know, it's just really hard, Chris. Um, look at the guys last night that did not get drafted. It is amazing. Look at the college careers they had and they did not get drafted. And then you look at a guy, I think it, one of the guys went in the first round that averaged eight points a game. So it's all, the NBA is a different animal. Um, it, what they're looking for, what they think translates, um, is just really hard to project. So like I tell all our guys in, in, in all our recruiting meetings and even the guys on our team, control what you can control, and value this education because no matter what happens, this place is a separator when you get your degree. And hopefully some of our guys, you know, they do have that dream and I want them to have that dream and I want to help them try and achieve that dream. But it takes a lot of, a lot of, a lot of variables for it to, to happen. So we, we just keep our nose down and work and that's kind of how we, we approach it. Hey, Scott, can I ask uh, one more question while we got you uh, out, outside of Murphy uh, with the news of the uh, conference uh, SEC expansion and the way things are changing a little bit with that conference uh, in all sports? I guess it became official yesterday. What are your thoughts on what you're seeing out there right now uh, and what do you expect uh, down the road as far as continued changes? Yeah, so I, I you know, I followed this probably closer than I follow most things only because I spend a, a lot of time in traffic in my car, like I'm sure all of you do in Houston. And I listen to a lot of uh, sports radio and, and I get a lot of people listen to it. Here's what I can tell you. Um, a lot of changes are coming. Um, who, what, where, and when, I have no idea. I mean, nobody would have predicted this one, right? Um, but they're coming. And when, when all these, when that 9-0 ruling of the NIL stuff against the NCA occurred, you know, more and more, you know, thing, they're, 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 they're almost becoming, you know, whatever, pushed to the side on all these deals and arrangements and things that are going on. So there's going to be a lot of changes, and it, and it could happen fairly quickly because people are positioning, right, all the time to try and get themselves the best, best chance of, you know, what, making money, right? And, and, and then hopefully somewhere in there be, being successful. But we're all trying, especially coming off of COVID, everybody trying to make sure they're positioned well in the next decade, uh, uh, financially support, you know, especially all us mid-major programs 
um, support our programs moving forward. So it's going to be very, very, very interesting next six to 12 months. Thanks, Scott. You're welcome. Anything else? You good? Guys, anything, guys, anything else for Coach? No, I love those recruiting stories. So thank you. <laughs> hey, that his is his is unbelievable. Un, un, it's, it's incredible uh, how how it ended up playing out, and uh, fortunate, you know, fortunate that it did, and that our our paths crossed. So that's it's a good one.